this millennium, the fourth letter, the fourth word, and the fourth day are a witness to the framework found in the fourth millennium. The first known pictograph of the fourth letter was this. All the letters in the Aleph Bet serve dual purposes in the Hebrew language, not only to record instructions and events, but also used for a numeric system. The numeric value of the fourth letter is four. Elohim gives us even more understanding when we pay attention to the numbers so often dispersed throughout the scriptures. The letter is pronounced Dalit. Three consonants spell this letter, Dalit, Lamed, and Tav. But these three consonants can be pronounced differently to mean different things. With the root word Dal, meaning weak or needy, in the sense of the poorest of the poor, a state of lowness. As a verb, it sometimes refers to physical distress. We see this used in Judges 6.6. 6. And cried, Yisrael greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Yisrael cried unto the Lord. The legs of the lame hang limp, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. As a verb, it describes a state of deprivation, which at its cutoff point is seen in a cry to God. This is so important because we're going to see this through the fourth millennium, especially when we look at some numbers in the year that Yeshua was born. When used as an adjective, it does not emphasize pain or oppression. Rather, it represents those who lack. This combination is found in scripture 12 times and used by four of the prophets in the fourth millennium. Here is one example, Isaiah 14, 30. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety, and I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. Amos 2, 7, that pant after the dust of the earth on the head of the poor, and turn aside the way of the meek, and a man and his father will go in unto the same maid to profane my holy name. A clear example of those who lacked the Spirit of God and go after the flesh. When used as a noun, the idea of physical or material deprivation predominates when used for the destitute, referring to the lower classes in Israel. 2 Kings 24, 14. And he carried away all Jerusalem, and all the princes, and all the mighty men of valor, even ten thousand captives, and all the craftsmen and smiths, none remained, save the poorest sort of the people of the land. There certainly was physical and material deprivation when they were carried away into Babylon. In the fourth millennium, the four beasts make war and overcome Elohim's people. These four nations, Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome, made a mark on his people. They influenced their hearts and minds because of their strength, and in some cases affected their walking in the ancient paths written in the first five books. But not just the ancient paths, but from a true understanding of the ancient script as well as a lack of understanding the patterns of the lights in the heavens. Some walked away with intention. Others were just following the ways of their father's traditional practices, unknowingly walking into darkness. The last pronunciation that we want to show you for this three-letter combination is Delet. Delet means door or gate. Delet literally describes the formation of the ancient letter form. The pictograph has exactly four connected line components. There are two upright posts with one top lintel post and one threshold. 
There are other Hebrew words found in scripture that are used for door and gate. The difference is that a delet, it is more about the instruments or hardware that function so that the door or gate can open. Doors and gates were mostly made from wood of trees. Elohim used the family tree for his purposes. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob made up three generations. It will be in the fourth generation that Jacob's blessing unfolds. For our purposes, we are looking at the significance of the fourth born son, Yehuda, also known as Judah. And these four verses, while Jacob's blessing was given in the third millennium, some of its fulfillment is in the fourth millennium. From Yehuda's five letter name, we can rightly divide the word into the four letter tetragram of Elohim's name. This leaves one unique letter behind, the fourth letter of the alphabet the Dalit, which one of those meanings is a door. Also, a state of lowness. Matthew restates the fourth portion of Jacob's blessing to Yehuda. Matthew 21, 5. Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the fowl of a donkey. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, The prophet? Zechariah. When did Zechariah say these words? And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Keslav. Darius the Great was the fourth Persian king of the Achaemenid Empire. The fourth year of Darius the Great was 440 years from the time that Solomon's house was completed in the 13th year. Look, they are both found in the seventh chapter, first verse. In the days of Herod the Great, Herod the father ruled over one kingdom. But after the death of the father, there were four sons left alive to continue to rule over the kingdom. But instead of one kingdom, it would now be broken up into four parts, all of whom ruled over a certain area designated by and subject to the authority of Rome. A tetrarch is a ruler of a quarter of a region or province, one four. Before Yeshua's ministry, Herod Archelaus received two quarters of the kingdom, Decapolis, Judea, and Samaria. Herod Antipas received Perea and Galilee. Herod Philip's portion was Traconitis, Batania, and Oronitis, as well as the east side of the Sea of Galilee. Herod Archelaus lost his portion after Rome had him banished to Vienna, to the region of Gaul, in 6 AD. Once deported, Rome now governed over his portion, installing seven Roman prefects until the end of the fourth millennium. And yet, this is just a microcosm of what we will see in this fourth millennium, which can be illustrated by taking a closer look at King Nebuchadnezzar's dream found in the book of Daniel. The four beasts are so encompassing of the fourth millennium that it will be addressed separately. Daniel's interpretation of the king's dream will help organize this extremely detailed fourth millennium into its four parts. Understanding that these three consonants have more than one meaning, not only being lowly, it is also a door, which can represent metaphorically an opportunity for a transition from one place to another place, in this millennium, his people will experience several transitions, including the priesthood. All of these doors opened into spaces that brought great challenges. But remember this one thing, 
A door or gate is a means to pass through a barrier. Most often when someone sees a door, they inquire, what is beyond that door? Once open, it provides passage to continue the journey or in the way, leading us to this word, derech, road, way, path, journey, direction, manner, habit, a course of life, in the way of moral character. Derech, first mentioned in Genesis 3.24. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. This is perhaps the perfect place to conclude the fourth letter and begin our journey onto the fourth word, Aleph Tav. We will share the fourth millennium in a different way, revealing the structure of this fourth word's numeric value and meanings. How some were led away from the house and others given a way to enter in. There is so much more.